The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, has arraigned the former Minister of Works, Chief Sheil Gunlewe, who also doubles as the pro-chancellor of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, and the vice-chancellor of, of the institution, Professor Olushola Oyewole, for alleged stealing and financial misappropriation at an Ogun State High Court sitting in Abeokuta, the state capital. They arraigned on an 18-count charge bordering on stealing and fraudulent conversion of institutions' property. They have, however, been granted bail by the presiding judge, Justice Olarewaju Majekodumi, to the tune of 50 million naira each and two sureties in like sum, one of which must have a landed property within the jurisdiction of the court, among other conditions. The defendants are to be remanded in the prison's custody pending the fulfilment of the bail conditions. The case has however been adjourned to the 16th, 19th and 20th of December for the commencement of hearing. In the meantime, wife of Nigeria's former Vice President, Mrs. Titi Abubakar, has testified today at the Lagos High Court sitting in Ikeja. She talked of how she was defrauded by a former governorship aspirant in Akwaibom State, and Sika Kabasi Jacobs. And Sika Kabasi Jacobs, Abdul Malik Ibrahim, and Dana Motos were arranged by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, on a 15 count charge of conspiracy, stealing, and fraudulent conversion of properties belonging to the Shipping Maritime Services Limited. In her testimony, Mrs. Atiku said that Akman Jacobs used the proceeds from the sales of the company's property to contest for the governorship position in Akwaibom State. She lamented that her investment in the company had gone down the drain and started and indeed stated that her interest in coming to court was to ensure that justice is done. Mrs. Atiku is expected to continue her evidence in court on December the 14th, 2016. You're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. Let's take you quickly to our Abuja studios now, shall we? As Gloria Umezweke joins me now for more on the news at 10. Hello, Gimba. The Canadian High Commissioner in Nigeria has appealed to the federal government to come out with concrete plans to end what he describes as the huge burden of child bride in Nigeria. Mr. Christopher Thurnley made the appeal at a stakeholders meeting towards ending child marriage in Nigeria. He said two in every five girls in Africa are given out in marriage before they attain the age of 18 and Nigeria has the highest record of such marriages. In Africa, two in five girls are married by the age of 19. In Nigeria, and I'm sorry to say this, but I'm also very heartened that we see people here like yourselves who are addressing the issue. In Nigeria, there are more child brides than in any other country. Than in any other country. Part of that is because Nigeria is such a huge country. The absolute numbers will be high, but there are massive numbers of young girls being married in this country as children. The AU campaign to end child marriage is raising awareness and accelerating change. Nigeria has signed on to this campaign and we are working with the government in support of its work to end child marriage. There is a national strategy that will be launched next week and I know that this meeting will provide an opportunity to discuss some of the known elements of that strategy. And if any of you are feeding into that, please go back to what I said about that age 18 definition. It's very important that that be embedded in the strategy. And there is resistance in Nigeria to that. As you know, it is not enough to have a strategy. Concrete actions must be taken to put plans into action and to accomplish concrete results. The Nigerian police says it needs over 20 billion naira to cover the insurance claims of over 3,000 police officers who died in active service. Well, this disclosure was made by the force insurance officer when he appeared before the House of Representatives ad hoc committee investigating alleged illegalities between government officials and insurance companies. 
The committee also heard from the head of service and officials of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. Our correspondent, Lanry Lassisi, reports. Uh, I would like the it's the continuation of an investigative hearing authorized by the House of Representatives. The ad hoc committee is investigating alleged conspiracy between government officials and insurance companies charged with insuring fixed assets of the federal government. The first agency to appear before the committee is the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, and their response did not please the committee. Because you cannot convince this parliament that your GMD will not have access to dailies, Nigerian dailies, where this thing was published last week Friday, a week ago. With that, the delegation was asked to leave. I'm an Anogu man from Yewa land in Ogu State. It was then the turn of the head of the civil service of the Federation. She explains the procedure followed by her office. At the beginning of the year, we will advertise for underwriters and uh, brokers and they have to meet the conditions spelt out by NICOM as well as the Bureau of uh, Public Procurement. She was told to submit more documents to the committee and officials of the Nigerian police force then faced the committee. We have, um, we have problem of funding, serious problem of Funding. The premium paid by government is grossly inadequate. He also gave the committee figures that painted a picture lawmakers found disturbing. Now we have over 3,000 people, isn't it? Yes. Yes, uh, they came to about 20 something, 20 something billion uncovered. Yes. There should be a certain cover. The insurance company decide to charge you a little bit more. There should be a, because it's increasing crime in the country. The committee also received documents from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. The committee says it will continue with its sitting next week. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News. The Edo State Governor Godwin Obasake has pledged to make the states an economic hub through agriculture. Governor Obasake made the promise after meeting with officials of the World Bank and some government officials in Abuja. He says the economic recession provides an opportunity for the state to contribute meaningfully to the people's welfare through the provision of incentives to boost local production of goods and services. Barely two weeks after Governor Godwin Obaseki of Edo State assumed office, he has been meeting with key government officials, investors and development partners on how to improve the socio-economic development of his people. The latest of such meetings is with officials of the World Bank. According to the governor, Edo State will soon become a major economic hub as it intends to kick-start initiatives that will have direct impact on the people. The recession itself provides opportunities and the real opportunity it provides is that we now have to look inwards because we cannot raise our, we are, we are not able to raise the level of foreign exchange we've, used, uh, we've had in the past to import the goods and services we need. Uh, for instance, I mean, we used to spend $15 billion importing food into Nigeria. Most of that food, uh, food can be cultivated locally, and we want to make Edo State um, one of the centers for food production. For officials of the World Bank, the existing relationship between the bank and the state government has been a long-standing one. They promise to assist the state through its intervention programs. Those type of vision actually resonate with what the World Bank also says. And uh, his program is very laudable in the area of uh, job creation. And uh, the mission of the bank is to actually fight poverty and to uh, expand uh, prosperity. The consultation did not stop at the World Bank. The governor also held a meeting with the Minister of Finance and officials of the Minister of Budget and National Planning. He says the state government will collaborate with the federal government in its social intervention program to better the lives of its people. There are programs that have been finalized by the federal government, social intervention programs that will help create jobs, um, help boost the economy, 
and also sustain the current economic reforms being um, being driven by the the current administration. We do not want Edo to be left out. With this commitment, Edo State indigents are hopeful for an accelerated economic development in the days ahead. You're watching the News at 10 on Channels Television, reaching you live from Lagos and celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. Time now for business news with Millicent Morker. Many thanks, Kimber. Welcome to Business News. The Trade Union Congress has appealed to operators of financial institutions across Nigeria to read the sector of corrupt practices. The president of the Trade Union Congress, Mr. Boboy Kaigama, made the appeal at a conference of union members from the financial institutions in Abuja. According to him, the financial corruption in the banking and insurance sector of the economy will further worsen Nigeria's economic situation if operators refuse to act. Since the National Bureau of Statistics officially declared Nigeria's economy to have entered into recession in August, there have been several conferences to discuss how to reflect the economy. This gathering of trade unionists in the financial sector is one of such fora as they are poised to discuss the role of trade union in growing the economy. The president of the Trade Union Congress urges members to read the financial sector of corruption to grow the economy. Just like the judiciary is trying to clean itself, every sector of the economy of this country must clean itself of corruption, including the banking and insurance sector. In the same vein, both the representative of the Minister of Labor and Employment and that of the Central Bank Governor appeal to employers of labor in the financial sector to promote policies that will contribute to quick economic recovery. It is pertinent to note that your union has enjoyed relative peace over the years. I therefore wish to remind you of the significant understandings reached between the unions and employers in this period of economic recession which was midwived by my ministry, and the utmost need to sustain and promote that part, which will no doubt contribute to economic recovery. As we intensify efforts to grow the country's economy, labor unions should be in the forefront, rallying their members to enhance labor productivity. I urge you, therefore, to use this platform to articulate additional strategic contributions which you must make towards growing the economy of our dear country. Nigeria's economy officially slipped into recession three months ago when the Bureau of Statistics reported a consecutive contraction of the nation's GDP from the 0.3% in the first quarter of 2016 to 2.06% in the second quarter. Analysts said deliberate policies by the government and financial regulators are urgently needed to reflate the economy. First City Monument Bank, one of Nigeria's commercial lenders, plans to raise 7.5 billion naira in tier two supplementary debt by year end to strengthen its capital base. The bank had said in August it will raise between 10 to 15 billion naira of tier two capital targeting retail investors for the offering. The bank today posted a rise in pre-tax profit to 14.18 billion naira in the first nine months of the year, up from 2.56 billion naira in the same period last year. FCMB, like several Nigerian lenders, are having to adapt their business models at short notice after the slump in crude prices since mid 2014 put pressure on the once lucrative oil and gas loan book. And the overnight interbank lending rate held steady for the second consecutive week at 14% today, even as the market anticipated the injection of October budgetary allocations to government agencies to boost liquidity in the system. On Wednesday, about 420 billion naira was distributed between the three tiers of government from crude oil revenues for the month of October. Traders said half of the amount distributed, which belongs to states and local governments, is expected to pass through the banking system. 
The interest rate at the interbank market is expected to initially drop below the benchmark interest rate early next week, but should pick up again as the central bank sells treasury bills to reduce liquidity in the system. And stocks post a 0.62% loss today as investors remain bearish. For details, here is Bolaji Akinwale. The bearish sentiment at the local boards continued on Friday as major indicators headed south. The benchmark index lost 0.62% to close at 25,333.39. Investors exchanged more than 2 billion naira for 144.1 million shares in 2000. 459 deals. Petroleum stocks led on the advances stable. Total gained 10.25%, followed by Mobile with 5%. On the flip side, Okum Oil topped with a drop of 9.68% from its share price. Photo Oil and Owando shared 8.99% and 5% each. Meantime, SCMB, Zenit Bank and Wemma Bank pulled the highest volume of shares for the week. That's the stock market report. I am Bolaji Akinwale. And on the global scene, European stocks closed slightly higher today amid low liquidity as a result of a shortened session on Wall Street after Thanksgiving holiday. And in Asia, most markets end the week on a positive note. Take a look at the numbers.